We can't lose, we are currently unbeaten, as well as Manchester United and Leicester City. It has to be a penalty, Connor Wickham is doing fantastic work. I'm gonna give it to Connor Wickham, he's getting 8.7. We have got 7 out of 9 points, even though we were so close. If you're in the Champions League spots, you have to wear the laser. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Crystal Palace Career Mode. I have got a few questions to catch up with and to answer, so let's get straight into it right now. If you're going to enjoy this episode, then make sure to leave a like down below. If we can get over 100 likes again, that would be absolutely awesome. Jonathan asks, will you let the more younger players play, or will you stick with your experienced players? I don't care about age. The best 11 players on my team will be playing. There are rumours that Jason Punchin might get banned by the FA for three games after humiliating and disrespecting the human rights of the Everton goalkeeper leading to ending his career forever. What are your thoughts on your player destroying the opposition goalkeeper? More of that please, and if they're going to complain about that I'll sort them right out. Love your vids man, keep it going, thank you very much. And the question is, how do you feel about the big teams taking you lightly? Honestly, I'm loving it. It's because they're underestimating us that we can beat them, we can dominate them, we can get fantastic results. The day, when the day comes, they won't underestimate us anymore. That's when I'm going to be in trouble. Hey manager, according to my sources, Bakary Sako, Wilfried Zaha, Yannick Balassi, Musa Sissoko, Jason Punch, and Saido Birohino, Jesus Christ, it's almost half my fucking team, were all involved in a bukkake with Mia Khalifa. Will you be disciplining them for their involvement in this? No, the only thing I want to know is why wasn't I invited? And hell, their performances aren't suffering because of it, so I I'd say go some more and have fun. And we are back with the Crystal Palace career mode. We've got three tough fixtures today, one including Manchester United. They are top of the BPL right now with eight wins and only one draw. We're six points behind them. But the first game of the episode is against Leicester, who are the current Premier League champions. So it's going to be tough games, but like I said, I usually do well against big teams. Leicester City currently sitting in 8th in the Premier League, so that's relatively solid. Uh, Manchester United, as I said, are top of the league. One of us is going to lose that unbeaten streak. It's between us and Man United for, uh, for being unbeaten. We've had too many draws though, unfortunately. And I don't like the way newspapers and journalists are trying to play mind games with us, saying that Sissoko's having a tough start and Berahino isn't performing enough. We're third in the Premier League. Come on, cut us some slack. Experimenting with the lineup a little bit. I'm going to play Sissoko in the centre midfield role instead of uh, James MacArthur. I feel like Sissoko needs a bit more playing time. Jason Punchin has been excellent so far, so he deserves to start ahead of Townsend, who's on the bench. And Berrohino is not going to get played if Conor Wickham keeps performing like he did in previous episode. First time at the King Power Stadium. Let's take him down. What are you? What are you doing? What on earth are you doing? Whoever that was, was it Scott Dan? I genuinely don't believe he's fluffed it like that. What on earth were you thinking? Kelly plays it into Dan. Dan completely malfunctions. And it's an easy finish in the end. For Nathan Dyer, it's 1-0. He's through on goal. King is on side. King with the shot off the post. And it's still 2-0. <laughs> Just get out, man. Just fuck off, all of you. Pass the... Oh, my... Double substitution, Townsend and Ledley, and uh, James Tompkins actually coming on because those three players that are coming off have been by far the worst I have ever seen in this career mode so far. It has been, it has been shocking. Oh my. Saha, good turn. Sissoko's right there. Musa, lay it off. Connor Wickham, it's 2 1, back in the game. Let's go, boys. We can still do this. There is hope. Connor Wickham, of course. Who else? Gets us the goal. Jesus Christ, that beard! Who is that? Who is that goalkeeper? That is mad! Good interception into Musa Sissoko. Sissoko, run round him. You've got the pace on more, I think. If you haven't got it, there is Andros Townsend. Townsend inside. Townsend, it's 2 2! Come on, Crystal Palace! Get in! Andros Townsend. Making a difference. I love that. That run. We Nobody was making runs in the first half. I control one player, start running with him, and everyone else is static, but the substitutions have paid off. Get in, Andros. Sissoko into Conor Wickham. Conor Wickham, hold on. There it is. Joe Ledley for 3-2. It's Joe Ledley. Ha <laughs> ha. Get in. What a comeback. That has to be the best comeback I've seen in this career. Well, this is the first comeback we've actually accomplished, I think, but what... An impact, Joe Ledley, another substitution. He's doing exactly what I asked from him, and this is going to have consequences for the next game and the lineup. 
Oh, no, 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 I shouldn't have done that. Danny Simpson plays it into Nathan Dyer. That is a challenge and a half. And who is it? James Tompkins. All three substitutions have made an incredible impact. Tompkins get rid of it eventually. And there we go. Counter attack is on. Zaha short. Zaha with the cross. It's Musa. He doesn't jump, surprisingly. But that's going to be the end of the game. It's the final whistle. We have won. And like I said, all three substitutions have made a complete difference. Without those three, we would have just lost that game and nobody would have said a thing. But right now, that is, that is the mentality I'm looking for. This is the mentality that wins you titles. We got hammered at half time, but the stats have turned around completely in that second half. You can see we had seven shots, six on target, double the shots on target. So in the end, we deserve it. And how about complaining about Musa Sissoko not performing well? 9.3 FIFA's man of the match. FIFA agrees with me that the three players I subbed off were the worst performance in that game. But there's actually quite a few people that could get man of the match. Conor Wickham was there. He just needed service. And the moment he got service, he scored. Townsend was brilliant when he came on. Ledley was brilliant when he came on. Sissoko stayed in the team for the full 90 minutes and performed like an absolute boss. And even though he was a bit sluggish in the first half, those two assists turned the game around. He wasn't greedy. He was looking to get us that win. He was a team player. So for that reason, I'm going to give Musa Sissoko man of the match in 9.3. Manchester City are currently beating Manchester United 30 minutes into the game. This could be a huge result. Townsend, Sissoko, Zaha and Wickham deserve they got in Team of the Week as well. That's probably the most amount of players we've had in the Team of the Week. And Joe Ledley just missed out, I'm guessing. Capital One Cup game against Preston North End. I'm going to completely rotate this side. I don't want to risk my first team players. And this is an opportunity for the likes of Berrihino and Punchin to prove to me that I've been wrong not playing them. Same goes for James Tompkins and Ledley. They were brilliant when coming on. If they can uh, confirm their good form in this game, then I can't see how I cannot pick them for the Man United game. Captain for the occasion is Jason Punch, and he does look like he has the best free kick stats. Much coming close, but uh, it's going to be Jason Punch, and 34 yards out. Impossible, seems like, but not a bad effort. Half time, this is a pretty poor affair, to be honest. I, I think I've showed you one free kick from 34 yards that wasn't even close. That was the only shot of the first half. I basically showed you everything in that one highlight. Alassani. Inside. Goes past one more. Lays that one off into James Tompkins. Tompkins turns. Shoots. Ooh. Deflected onto the crossbar. James Tompkins providing the most danger in the game so far. Oh. No way. If he's onside. This could be... That would have been the best goal of the month, no doubt. What a send from James Tompkins. Ledley, down bottom to Punchin. Punchin out wide to Fraser Campbell. Campbell, just strike this, my son, just wide. Oh, well done, Jordan Much. Can you get there ahead of Adam Brown? No, you can't. Uh, but he's got to get there. Well, go well done, well done. Better he know. Final few minutes of the game. Jason Punchin moving forward. It's a slow pass. Hold on. Joe Ledley to win it full time. I can't believe we messed up that final attack. It just shows how poor the quality of some of these players are. I mean, not, nothing against Joe Ledley, of course, because he was fantastic, but the fitness levels are going fast. I'm not going to make subs. This is a team that has to pull it off. Ledley into Ezekiel Friars. Friars into Alessani. Good ball. Just about stays in. Alessani looking for Punchin. Punchin looking for Berahino. Berahino! It's 1-0. 105th minute. Took us forever, and I think that's uh, Saido Berahino's first goal in Crystal Palace service. It took forever for him to finally get that goal, but hopefully that means um, the flood floodgates are going to open now, and he's going to bang in a couple more this season. Got a bit lucky with the finish, but we'll take it. 1-0, Crystal Palace. Campbell, you're onside against Clark. Good move. Campbell, now into Berahino. Berahino back into Campbell. Oh, this football was so good, but I couldn't finish it. Players have absolutely no stamina left, but it doesn't matter. That's the final whistle. Capital One Cup game between Preston North End and Crystal Palace ends in favour of us beating them 1-0. I don't really rate the Capital One Cup. I'm not, I wouldn't have even been mad if we lost or anything. This is just one of those games that you have to play. We deserve to win, though. And now it's time to uh, to give someone a man of the match. I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about this. Jason Punchin got the assist. He got the most passes completed as well. 12 out of 13. I'm going to make it easy on myself. I'm going to give uh, Jason Punch 7.4 for man of the match. Manchester United ended up losing the Manchester Derby against City. So this is great news for us. We're only three points behind them. And in a confrontation at the Old Trafford, we could go level on points with them. 
huge game, biggest game of the, the series so far. We've got so many tired legs from the Capital One Cup game that I'm forced to play James MacArthur at left back. He's not really a left back, but he does have the defensive capabilities, I guess, to play there. It's not ideal, but this is what we have to do. The midfield is still strong. Kabaisi, Soko, Townsend, love that. The front three as well. Bolasi still kind of underwhelming. I need to see more of him, but Connor Wickham and Zaha doing good work. Scott Dan has been in horrible form, but I don't have anyone to replace him with. Tompkins is just too tired at the moment. He may come on at half-time, though. This is a team to take on Man United. Oh yeah, we're not playing at Old Trafford, by the way. We're playing at Selhurst Park, even better. Don't know why I thought it was at Old Trafford, but it's at Selhurst Park. We're playing at home against the Premier League leaders, current Premier League leaders, Manchester United. And I have a feeling this time, this is a team, a big team, that will not underestimate us, unlike Manchester City and Chelsea and Tottenham, so on and so forth. I think they're going to take this game very seriously. As you can see, a win for both sides could be fantastic. It would be a huge boost for us to take first spot in the league for once. And Man United could run away with it if they beat us today, but uh, I'm going to give it my best shot. Manchester United are playing with this 11. Zlatan Ibrahimovic on the bench, as well as... Uh, Juan Mata and Marcos Rojo. We have Mkhitaryan in the lineup though, playing uh, Eric Bailly, Bertrand Bailly, the new centre back as well. So you can see that the signings have been made. It's a strong Man United team, but I'm up for the task. Good turn by Zaha. We've got uh, Conor Wickham. It's 1 0 Crystal Palace. What a ball by Wilfried Zaha. Conor Wickham again on the end of it. Lovely turn by Zaha. First time. Stop and turn. He whips with that, that cross. The curl on that ball was incredible. Anyone could have headed it in from there, but Conor Wickham, of course, positionally was perfect. And the header was strong enough to beat David De Gea. Perfect start for Crystal Palace. James from left back. What are you doing, James? He's placed it into uh, Zaha, who's against Luke Shaw for this one. Goes past him again. It's a penalty. He's given it. Baye goes in for a challenge. I wasn't sure if that was a pen or not, but he has been booked. And the ball goes on the spot. This is a perfect opportunity and at the perfect time to double our lead. Let's take another look at this one. Zaha ball rolls. Yeah, you can give that one. I think that's a penalty. I'm going to let you guys decide in the comments down below, but I'm pretty sure that one goes to the spot every single time. Yohan Kabai, I have faith in you to put this one away against David De Gea. We're going for power and placement. It's 2-0 just before the end of the first half. Perfect moment to strike. And Man United seem to be uh, on the ropes now because they haven't got a clue what they're doing anymore. Johan, goal number four. I think he may be the club top scorer at this point. If not, at least level with uh, Conor Wickham. Half time leading 2-0. I think we have played really well in this first half. Man United not necessarily underestimating us because they've had the possession. They're trying to hold on to the ball. We're just completely deadly and overpowered on the counter attack. That is what we do best with the pace on the wings. Uh, that's twice Zaha has caused the goal to happen because he absolutely ruined Luke Shaw's career uh, twice, so that's good. Man United still not out of this one. They could get a goal back and crawl back into this game, but I'm confident that we can see this game out if we play smart and sensible. Still don't know at this point why they haven't brought on Zlatan. Musa Sissoko out strengthening Morgan Schneiderlin. Well done. And now through to Johan Kabai, who's pushed up. Johan, fake shots into Musa. That pass should have been better, Kabai. Yannick, good header into uh, Musa. Musa, good pace. Musa still going, got nearly fouled. Musa run through, he deserves a goal. Musa Sissoko, it's 3 0, and he gets the goal that he deserves. His first goal for Crystal Palace, and it has been coming. He had a man of the match performance in uh, the first game. He had two assists then, and now he finally gets a goal. A little bit lucky with the deflection on Daily Blind's leg, but I think that was going in either way. It was a good shot. David De Gea left with absolutely no chance and it seems like the game is over for Manchester United. Zlatan's on the pitch, but too little too late. Hendrik, Kitarian, good ball in. Mandanda, he's not claiming it. He's not claiming it. Good save though. And that's the final whistle. We have won the game against Manchester United. We have given them their first loss in the Premier League season. This is a huge result. Maybe now the world, the Premier League, the teams, the journalists will see us as a viable title contender in this season because to be fair we haven't really outplayed Man United we were just clinical we were mature we were smart we did what we had to do and that is what champions can do that even when you're not playing well you can still win big games that is the sign of a champion for me there's not really a player I can single out and say wow he had a fantastic game and he did this or he did that 
But it has to be said, Zaha caused the first two goals to happen. Brilliant cross, penalty foul was made on him. And although I would want to give it to Sissoko again, I feel like Zaha deserves it. Wilfried Zaha is getting 7.3 added to his Man of the Match rating. He wins it. In the next episode, we'll be taking on Liverpool, Sunderland and Hull City. Three Premier League games again. Very, very important to pick up some solid results. We have now joined Manchester United at the top of the table. West Ham draw points. They lost to Watford, which is fantastic. We're the first in the league for the first time ever in this career mode. Top of the league. Now they've got to take us seriously, for real. Uh, Joe Ledley was a bit upset that he didn't play that game, but fair enough. As you can see, it's a new month, though. The month of November. That means you guys need to vote for the goal of the month for October. Games against West Bromwich, West Ham, Leicester, Man United and Preston North End. Three goals, three nominees. Pick your vote. The goals are coming up right now. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.